24 hours after the event. In December 1978, American student Richard Newton predicted 45 people would die in a plane crash on March the 11th. And on the 14th of March, 47 people did die at Gatta in the Persian Gulf. He'd also forecast the plane would have red on its tail, and he was right. Yet Newton claimed no psychic powers. He'd just worked it out from statistics that anyone could find in books. First, he noted that the majority of airlines have some red in their logos. You'll see that more than half have red somewhere in their logos. For instance, uh, American Airlines, Alitalia, TWA, JAL, all have red in their logos. And considering that half of these have red somewhere in their logos, it's a very safe bet to assume that a plane that crashes is going to have red in its logo somewhere. In this book is listed every plane crash for 25 years. I averaged the number of fatalities per crash over that 25 year period and found out that it averaged between 40 and 50. I chose 45, 47 were killed. As far as the time of the year of, the, of a crash, I drew this graph. And listed here are the number of crashes and listed here are the months of the year in which crashes take place. And looking at this graph, you'll notice that March is tw twice as bad to fly in as May, with an average of about 4.6 crashes per month over that 25-year period. And averaging the month of March crashes here, you'll notice that the second week of March, or the Ides of March, are the worst time of the month in which to fly. So are there any true insights into the future? Most premonitions can undoubtedly be explained by coincidence. Even the most improbable events will occur if you wait long enough. The question is, how long is enough? Somebody once said that the laws of chance do not merely permit coincidences, they compel them. We've all had examples of this. Perhaps the commonest is when you think of somebody and five minutes later, they call you up on the telephone. Yet other premonitions may involve something more. They may be subconscious foresight, warnings of some danger that the senses have detected of which we are not yet fully aware. No other explanation is necessary. Premonitions are warnings from our own minds, not from the future. Yet we should take them seriously because the dangers of which they speak may be perfectly real. So that's why I have a strange feeling whenever one of my friends tells me a premonition something bad may indeed be about to happen. On June the 1st, 1974, the Nipro chemical plant at Flixborough and Lincolnshire exploded. Disaster struck just before five. Yet one woman claimed she heard the details five hours earlier in a TV news flash which broke into the Saturday morning film. Leslie Brennan. At first I didn't really take much notice of it because I was, you know, waiting for it to finish quick so I can get on with the film. And then I heard them mention the name Flixborough near Grimsby. And with that, I listened a bit closer to it. And they said there'd been this terrible explosion at Flixborough. There'd been a number of people injured, a number of people killed. Leslie told her friend Peter East the news when he came to lunch. I walked down to Leslie's house, which would be about 20 past 12 when I got there. Um, just after we got in, Leslie told us, you know, that there'd been an explosion. We flash on television telling us about an explosion. And we thought no more about it until it came on the news at tea time and 10 o'clock. And um, then the reporters had said that it had happened at tea time. Well, we just sat back and laughed about it. You know, said, mm, silly report has got it wrong again. You know, typical. <laughs> Dinner time. <laughs> or so we thought. But the reporters hadn't got it wrong. The plant went up at 4.53. How could Leslie have known five hours ahead? Well, five hours different from what Leslie had told us. Leslie had seen it at 12 o'clock time and it happened five hours later. You know, we couldn't believe it. Um, I remember my friend, I can see her face now. She looked at me and said, oh, you know, <laughs> you told us about that at dinner time. I said, yes, I know. And I can remember feeling very, oh, 
made me feel queer, very cold and shaky. And I can remember getting this shiver all the way through me. And, um, really, I can't explain the feeling. It was unusual. In 1971, the submarine Artemis visited Grimsby. The sailors were soon after the local girls. Sandra MacDonald was one. And I met one particular boy and we was with him for about two days till it sailed. And it sailed on the 17th, on the 13th, it was June. And a week later, on the Wednesday, I had a dream on the night time. And in this dream, I saw a, like big grey stones, which I thought, it was like a wall. And I thought that it was a harbour somewhere. And I actually saw the submarine sink. And I don't know how I knew, but there were three men trapped on board in the dream. The first person she told was her mother. She came down and she said, oh, mum, I've had an awful dream. She said, uh, the Artemis sank with three men aboard. So I said, well, don't worry too much. It's because you've, you know, they've gone away. You've had a good time. And then a week later, which was the 30th of June, the submarine did actually sink. I was laid in bed reading waiting for her to come home and the uh, news flash came on the radio and said that the artemis had sank so when she came home from the dance i called her into the bedroom and told her what had happened and she just i just sandra that dream you had about the artemis has come true and she just broke down and cried you know because i think i upset her when it came true i was absolutely heartbroken because it frightened me i mean i'd never had anything like that before and at first i thought my mum was joking so when she saw how upset I was and everything else, and as I say, we, we sat up most of the night listening to the bulletins of the radio, me and Mum together, to see if anybody had died on it, you know, because I thought it might be somebody I knew on board. Artemis had gone down in Portsmouth Harbour. The three men on board were rescued. Two of them were indeed friends of Sandra MacDonald. She's still unnerved by the accuracy of her dream. I didn't really understand it at first. I'd heard about premonitions, but I was sort of somebody else. You know, I was quite sceptical about it, really. But um, obviously it does happen. And I'll go back after the break to look into the strange power of dowsing. Is it a magic trick or a divine gift?